morning, church. We invite you to stand and join in as we praise God this morning. Holy Spirit, fall in 
presence is enough and I'm in the mystery why will stand my ground my God you are enough you are with me father you're for me we will never conquer me I belong to I'm never alone, I'm never abandoned, fear you'll never conquer me, I belong to Jesus. No need to fear, for he casts out all fear. You belong to Jesus, all things are possible in his name. If I stumble, I will not break. You'll be right there. You're in every step I take. When the rain fell, when the floods came, when the wind blew, I was okay. You were right there. You're in every step I take. When the night falls, when my heart aches, if I stumble, I will not break. You'll be right there. You're in every step I take. You're my shepherd. You're my keeper. My provider. My protector. You surround me. You're in every step I take.
what the person thinks in front of you, beside you, behind you. It's not about them. Help us to give ourselves completely and fully to you. We're called to be different from this world. in farther and farther they're stirring away from you let's pray there's a switch in our hearts that we don't act godly we don't act church churchly just on Sundays this is a whole life transformation fixated on the material things, the cars we drive, the houses we own, the amount of money in our bank accounts. It doesn't matter. If the person next to you doesn't know Jesus, it doesn't matter. with us too. We got to change our hearts, change our attitudes. I say it all the time, but these are more than just songs, people. These are more than just songs. This should be coming straight from your heart. Words have power. We know that. God spoke and what happened. shift in this room. What other crap we came in with. <laughs> that it would just go away. That we put our total focus on you and what your words have to say and how we are going to apply it to our lives and how we're going to use it to better ourselves and to better those around us to reach those who are hurting who are lost and are broken. I just thank you for being in this place. I just thank you that we're able to worship you freely, to lift up your name and glorify your name only. We just thank you for this move, and it's in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, good morning. Happy Sunday. Go ahead and say hi to somebody.
Hey, good morning, church. It is great to see you today. Thank you for being here and worshiping with us. If you're joining us online, thank you for joining us online today. Uh, we just have a few announcements that we want to go through before uh, we continue on with the service today. Uh, first thing we want to let you know about is that uh, it is time to get ready for your, uh, this fall. And so with that, we're going to have our, our fall leaders meeting on Wednesday, August 31st at 7 o'clock. Uh, this meeting is for anyone and everyone who helps out with children's ministry or youth ministry whether it be on a Sunday morning or on a Wednesday night, uh, we always get together at the beginning of the year to really kind of vision cast for this year and to make sure that our hearts are ready to, to go and to cast vision for just the ministry that's going to happen. And so if you are interested in helping in children's ministry or youth ministry, we are always in need of more help. And if that's something that maybe stirs your heart, would you come and uh, talk to me or talk to Pastor Brad or shoot us an email? Uh, you can email the church anytime, cgsoffice1 at gmail.com. Let us know. You could also stop by the Welcome Center. You can fill out a volunteer form. Uh, there's just lots of different avenues for letting us know that you want to help and serve uh, this fall. And uh, we're excited about it. And we're excited about uh, everything that God wants to do this, uh, this fall. But it all starts really at that meeting where, where we get together, we cast vision, we, we unite together to get ready to, uh, to minister to the lives of, of children, not only just the children that come to church here, but in our community as well. So that is coming up. Mark your calendars for that if at uh, all possible. Please be there. It's just, it's just really important uh, that we all get together uh, during that time. Uh, this morning, you should have been handed out as you walked in a couple different pieces of paper. Uh, the first one is for the uh, Bowling Green Pregnancy Center, their uh, annual walkathon. Uh, and then also uh, the Nest, uh, their, uh, this is their month of fundraising. Both organizations are fantastic organizations that care about life. And here at Church of the Good Shepherd, we believe in life. We believe in supporting life and through different avenues. Uh, first through the Pregnancy Center, uh, through their annual walkathon. This is one of their big fundraisers. And then secondly, through the Nest. The Nest provides uh, child care for mothers who have chosen life. What a, what a great opportunity for us to not only say that we believe in life, but also to back it up by helping support mothers who choose life. So uh, if you have any questions about those, uh, you can talk to us after the service stop at the Welcome Center. But uh, all the information on, on both pieces of paper are pretty self-explanatory. So we encourage you, uh, if, you're, if you feel led to support, this is uh, really the best time of the year to help support uh, both those organizations. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, CGS shirts. Some of the shirts that got printed uh, had some stains on it. Uh, if you weren't here last week, what we're asking is that uh, if your shirt was not correct, uh, that you uh, let us know at the Welcome Center. And then next week, if you bring it in, uh, we're hoping to let them know this week uh, how many shirts they need to reprint, what sizes and everything. So we want to get those to you. Please return the ones that were ruined. And uh, again, if you're watching online and you'd like to let us know that your shirt got ruined, uh, uh, CGS office one at gmail.com. You can let us know through email that way, or you can call and leave a message at the church as well. So uh, we want to get that taken care of. Uh, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings, a couple of different ways that that looks. If you're in-house, the baskets are in the back. You can drop off your tithes and offerings at any point throughout the service or after the service. Uh, you can also download the Church Center app, which is a, a platform for giving, but also has lots of different information about upcoming events of the church. Uh, you can watch previous sermons online and all different kinds of things. Great tool uh, to use. You can also text 84321. You can set up giving via text, or you can go to cgs.church, and you can click on on the giving tab on the church website. So lots of different ways that you can do that. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for today. God, just, uh, just the amazing time of worship that we had today. God, thank you that we have this opportunity to connect with you. Uh, just as the body of Christ and then through the week as individuals, Father God, that we, we have full access to you. God, as we give back to you now, we ask that you take these tithes and these offerings to use it to further your kingdom. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, before we continue on with our service uh, this morning, uh, we're going to show just a short video about the LifeWise Academy. LifeWise Academy, uh, this is year number two over at Eastwood, but this is the launching year for Elmwood, and uh, we want to cast some vision for that. So we're going to show a video, and then Nicole Gherkins and uh, Matt Reynolds will come up and share just a little bit, uh, give you some updates, and then we'll continue on with the service. My son is in the second grade at our local public school, and somehow he gets to attend a Bible class during the school day. The Supreme Court has spoken. Public school students can receive Bible education during school hours. 
I know it sounds crazy, but it's real. Almost everyone has heard of the separation of church and state, but almost no one knows that in 1952, the Supreme Court ruled that public school students can be released from school in the middle of the school day to receive Bible education as long as the program is off school property, privately funded, and they have parental permission. LifeWise Academy believes this is the single greatest missed opportunity of the American church to reach the next generation. LifeWise Academy exists to provide all the plug and play tools to communities like yours to launch a local program. Not only is the concept possible, but it's spreading rapidly and students' lives are being changed. We are seeing some of our programs have a participation rate of more than 95% of their local public school students. Most of these students are completely unfamiliar with the basic Bible stories. I was in one class recently where the teacher asked if anyone knew the names of Jesus' parents. And in a class of 20 public school students, not a single one knew that Joseph and Mary were the names of Jesus' parents, but all of those students are now being taught the Bible. I have seen my own children testify. They've seen their classmates changed. Kids need to be affirmed, they need sports, but more than anything, they need to hear the gospel. There are people in our backyard who have never heard the name of Jesus. I don't know about any other organizations that are doing anything like this. We wouldn't be able to discuss these things with them if not for doing it right in the middle of the school day. The law allows us to do it, so why not do it? What could be more important than the next generation learning the Word of God? And why not have a Bible education program for your public school students? Anyone in any community can get the ball rolling. Voice your support for a Bible education program for your local school at lifewiseacademy.org. Good morning. I'm uh, Matt Reynolds. And I'm Nicole Gerkins. Uh, we serve on the board at, uh, for our uh, Elmwood LifeWise we're excited to tell everybody that we're going to launch September 12th. Uh, we have a room secured at the Elmwood Community Center, which is actually right across the driveway from the school. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, 37 students already signed up. And the way the program, the way God has blessed this program and the way it's moving, we expect that number to increase um, after the launch of the program. Uh, thanks to the community and the way the funding has gone, we. Uh, you know, we're lucky enough to be able to get this to make this happen this year. And uh, just hope that it keeps moving the way God wants it to. Amen. Um, if you have any questions after the service, um, myself and Matt and Jessica Brumball, our director, will be outside the foyer if you would like to stop by. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Good morning. It is good to see everyone and be with you this morning. My name is Brad Keen. I am the lead pastor here. And, uh, you know, if you are watching online, thank you for tuning in. And uh, thank you for being here if you are a guest. What a, what a great ministry. Uh, I know uh, we really helped uh, and, and got familiar with this ministry last year as uh, Eastwood's LifeWise kicked off. And I know we've had a lot of uh, our students in the Eastwood community go through that this last year. And so we are excited about Elmwood. Uh, we're excited about that ministry. It's a ministry that we are supporting uh, as a church. I mean, we, we, we put our, you know, some people put their, their money where their mouth is. We put our money where our ministry is going. Uh, and that's what we're doing. And so we invest in our local outreaches. And so uh, we are blessed to invest in uh, both Eastwood and the Elmwood LifeWise. So, uh, you know, Eastwood and, and Elmwood parents just want to encourage encourage you guys in that. Um, get your students signed up. Uh, go on Facebook. Find their social media page. Share it on your page, please. Let your uh, neighbors and, and, and other people in the community, uh, other parents, know about what's going on because there is a lot of confusion with separation of church and state. And, uh, but again, this is something that students come out for one hour uh, one hour a week is what they're coming. They're not coming out one hour a day. They're coming out one hour a week, and uh, right now it's for elementary age students. And so uh, it's just a, a great ministry. And just want to encourage you guys uh, in that. And let's spread the word. Amen. 
And uh, so we are excited as a church to partner with them. And we're excited that we have so many different people from church uh, that, are, that are here. Matt and Nicole are serving on the board. Uh, Jackie Shank is serving as one of the teachers. Um, you know, we just have a lot of different people that are. Um, Susie Rowell is, is, is helping as well. So we just have a lot of people, part of Church Good Shepherd, that are hands-on making uh, this ministry happen. And, and the same thing with the Eastwood. And so, guys, we are active in our community. Tell people about Jesus. Amen. You know, Liz was praying about that this morning. You know, it, it's so easy to get caught up in the things of the world, but it's about telling people about Jesus. And that's what this ministry does at a, at, at a very young age. We've just had a summer, a great summer full of ministry. It started with H&I, and we had uh, summer camp and VBS, and now we got the fair coming up. We'll have a booth in the, at the fair in a couple weeks, and we got LifeWise uh, kicking off. And so uh, God is on the move, and uh, we need to roll up our sleeves and get to work and use our gifts and talents for His kingdom and His glory. Amen? All right, well, let's pray, and then uh, we will jump into the Word of God this morning. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you, and God, we give you thanks and praise for all the, the different ministries, Father God, that we get to partner with, Lord, if it's uh, local ministries, if it's overseas ministries and, and missionaries. And God, we are about our Father's business. We are about your work. God, we are about telling people about Jesus. It's not about coming to church on a, a Sunday and a Wednesday, but God, it's going out from here and being salt and light in the world and, and, and using the resources you've given us, if it's our finances, if it's our time, if it's our talents, if it's our abilities, if it's our influence, if it's a business that we have, whatever it is, Father God, to further your kingdom, that is why we are here on this earth. And so God, we ask that you would use us individually, that you would use us corporately as a church body, as a church family, uh, to proclaim your goodness God, we pray for those that aren't here right now, those that uh, might be recovering at home from an illness or surgeries. Uh, God, those that just are, are gone today, God, that you'd be with them, that you'd bring them back safely in the weeks to come. But God, just open our hearts and open our ears to receive from you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it is good to be with you again this morning. Can you believe that it is the first Sunday of August already? I'm a little depressed, honestly, as I, as I think about that and, and uh, say that. I was thinking about that this morning because um, it, was, it was one of those realities where this week, it always seems to kind of catch up on me because, you know, we're just summer mode and you're kind of running and going and we've had so much ministry going on here this summer. And then you flip the page and you get to August and this morning I just had this epiphany moment. I was excited and I wanted to cry and all these things because my oldest turns 21 tomorrow. And I was like, what? 21? And uh, so I've got two in college now this fall and one that's a junior. And then we got a nine-year-old running around. I don't know how that happened. But, uh, you know, so it, she keeps up with us. But, you know, August is just kind of one of those, those crazy uh, months, you know. And that's, you know, that my wife and I, we've got our 27th anniversary this week as well. Because uh, I only look 27, so I know that's hard to believe. Uh, but <clears throat> it's true. But, you know, this is the time of year that just always feels weird to me because it feels like at this time we should be in the middle of summer. But we're not. I mean, kids are already back into sports, right? I know my daughter started running this last week, and I've got an opportunity to help coach our, 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 and be part of our middle school football program over at Lakota this year, so I've been helping with that. So I've been kind of involved in, in sports and just a great ministry avenue there. And, and uh, you know, in a couple of weeks, I know you guys are planning, like we are, our kids are going to be back into school. You know, my kids will be back into college as well. And yet it feels like, you know, they used to call them the dog days of August, right? It's hot, it's summer, but now you get to August 1st, it's like school, 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 school. And uh, so anyways, uh, it doesn't actually feel like summer, but, you know, here we are. Um, you know, hopefully you found a little bit of time this summer to get away, to decompress, 
Uh, maybe you got to go camping or go on vacation for just a few days. Or uh, maybe you went to the fair. I saw a bunch of you at the fair on Friday, had the opportunity to go and, and uh, work a few hours for the sheriff's office and just be part of uh, just that ministry and, and, and great team that we have here in our county with our sheriff's deputies. Uh, but maybe you went camping or you know just got a vacation and did something. And if you didn't, uh, hopefully you take some time in the next couple of weeks to do that, even if you just do a quick little staycation and just kind of lock yourself away at home for a couple of days and just find some time to breathe and, and to relax uh, a little bit. But today we are going to start... Um, I guess our last series of the summer, it will take us through the rest of, of August. Uh, you know, I kind of play this mental game with myself that until it hits September 1st, I just try to stay in a summer mindset, uh, even when the kids go back to school. So I kind of try to fool myself that it's still summer. Uh, so summer feels like it is, it is longer. But we're going to start our, our last series of the summer as, before we begin to look for fall and, and all the kickoff things that we're going to be doing in September. We'll be talking about more about those things uh, in the next couple of weeks. But this morning, uh, you know, part of what we're going to be talking about this morning in uh, this series that we're calling Cadence, and we're looking at things from God's viewpoint this morning, is I want to talk about something that God has, you know, really been working on me for a, a long time. It's something uh, you know, that I've struggled with. And so I just want to, you know, be transparent and share a little bit of my ugly with you this morning. Uh, can I do that? Is that all right? Uh, that's one thing that you know by now with me as your pastor for the last nine years. Uh, I'm the first one to tell you I don't have it all together. I'm the first one to tell you that I'm not perfect, that, you know, I'm the chief mistake maker around here and uh, just ask my family. But, you know, I own those things uh, as, as well. And so, you know, I like to be transparent and be honest. I tell you all the great things that happen in my life, but I'm also pretty honest of all the speed bumps and hiccups along the way. So just want to be a little uh, transparent and share some of my ugly with you this morning. This is an area that I am a slow learner. In. It's an area that God has been working with me on, and it is in the area of rest. Because my personality type is, I am a doer. I am a planner. I am a, there's a goal, let's go get it done. Where are all my goal people? Let me, raise your hands, come on, make me feel good. All right, yeah, yeah, some of us, it's just, it's just, all someone's got to do is say, I don't think you can do that, and you're like, oh yeah, here we go, you know, and that's all the motivation you need, and the rest of you are going, what? What are you talking about? And I need my iced tea, where's that? No, uh, you know, I mean, so, you know, that's an area that I am, uh, you know, working on. I am highly motivated. I, can, I know how to easily motivate uh, myself, which are all good things. But for those of us that are wired that way, we also need to put the same effort into finding time to rest in our life as well. You know, finding rest is part of the bigger picture of living life with a healthy balance. How many know it's good to live life with a healthy balance? You know, for me in ministry as, as a pastor, there's, there's always more to do. There's always another meeting that needs to be had, another, another uh, department uh, leader to, to touch base with and to help and to encourage, another counseling appointment to, to have, another, another sermon to plan. There's something more that needs to be done, and many of you uh, feel the same way in, in your job. But one of the things that God has been teaching me is sometimes some of the best ministry that we can do is also to ourselves. We can't always minister to others. Wherever you're at in your life, whatever the ministry is that God has you doing in your life, you need to make sure that you take time uh, to minister to yourselves as well. I got to tell you, I just scared myself for a second. There is a pen that's up here, and this pen has fallen on the ground. When I stepped on it, it felt like when I get to the edge of the platform. I thought I was going to walk off the platform for a second. And I'm like, I'm not that close to the edge. Um, scared myself. I never want to fall off the platform on a Sunday morning. It's the glasses, that's right. They're messing me up, my bifocals. But here's the thing. Again, sometimes the best ministry we can do is for ourselves and to be able to rest because God has made people, he's made you and me, to need rest in our lives. We're going to take a look this morning. We're in the next few weeks. We're going to dig into scripture because after God 
was done with creation on the seventh day, what did God himself do? He rested. And why that light bulb just going on in my life? But God rested. He took time to rest. You know, God has created and told us to take a Sabbath day and, and to keep it holy and to rest. And again, here's some of my ugly. I find that to be a very, very difficult thing for me to do. Why? Because I can't rest on Sundays. And I can't rest on Saturdays because no matter what I'm doing on Saturdays, there's some level of my Saturday where I'm preparing and studying for Sunday. And if I'm not studying and preparing, no matter what I'm doing, I'm thinking about the service and I'm praying and I'm, and I'm in tune. And Mondays are a terrible day to rest because, you know, it's just, you know, you just got done with Sunday and you're exhausted. And if I took Monday as my Sabbath day, I'd never get anything done. Uh, you know, productive anywhere in my life. And so finding that has been a very difficult thing uh, for my life in my last 24 plus years uh, of ministry. But finding a Sabbath is important. And so that's something that God has just been challenging me on how, to, how, do, you, how do you do that? Because rest is important. And so again, it's something that I am intentionally working on. And I know many of you struggle with this whole rest thing as well. I've talked to you about it and you live crazy lives and you've got kids in sports and you, or you've got grandkids and you're running here, there, and everyone. Does anyone feel like life is crazy? Raise your hands. And you're always running. Raise them high. Let me, okay, good. Yeah. You know, probably 75% of the hands in the room were up and the rest of you, you're just not awake yet. Because life is crazy. We're constantly being pulled in directions. There's so many demands for this and that and, and, and the other thing that's going on in life. You know, we were on vacation a couple of weeks ago. And while on vacation, I took time to rest. I took some time to not think about uh, church. Uh, actually, I was reminded this morning uh, that just, it just kind of hit me during worship. Somebody had texted me about something, and I'm like, I forgot to respond to that text because I didn't respond to it while I was on vacation. I'm like, I got to go back and respond to that text because I took time to rest, and we as a family took time to rest, and uh, we made some memories together, and guess what? We enjoyed it, and we needed it. As a family, we needed it, and I told my wife, I'm like, we need to do this more. You know, maybe some of you that sounds crazy, you're like, I got, no time, I got no problem resting, Pastor. I need motivation. You know, maybe, maybe that's you, but a lot of us, we need to find that healthy balance in our life and find time uh, to rest. And so I told my wife, I said, I'm going to do my best to take the rest of my vacation uh, this year. And even if it's a staycation, and we just get some things done around the house for the week and find some time to rest and find some time uh, to, to be together. Again, this is something that God has been working with me on. Again, not that we can't be busy, not that we can't be crazy busy, not that God doesn't have amazing ministry opportunities for us, but we also need to know when to dial it back and to rest. Amen? So that's what I'm talking I'm not telling you to, to quit your job. I'm not telling you to quit the amazing ministry opportunities that God has put in your path, but just make sure that we find time to rest as well. You know, life has... Uh, a, a rhythm to it. Have you noticed that? We noticed that when we were on vacation. As a family, we got better relationally. We got better emotionally. We got better physically. We got better spiritually because we took time to rest. We got stronger as a family unit by taking time to rest. But life has this rhythm to it. And when one area gets out of balance a little bit, what happens to the other areas of life? They get out of balance. See, you guys know this stuff. You guys come up and help me preach this. Life gets out of balance. You know, the worship team on a Sunday morning, wasn't it just amazing worship this morning? You just sense the presence of God. But if our keyboard player is playing the keys and they're off beat a little bit, we're going to notice that, right? Right? We're going to notice that. But the song will go on. But we will, well, boy, that doesn't seem quite right, but but the song will go on if that happens. And now if the drummer's offbeat, we're really going to notice that. We've got some good drummers in this church. But if the drummer's offbeat, we're really going to know that the, the drummer is offbeat. Another word that describes all of this is where 
we're getting the name for this series, and that's the word cadence. Cadence is another word that describes it. Cadence is the beat, the time, or the measure of rhythmical motion or activity. It's a modulation or inflection of the voice. For example, for all of you that, for all of you that uh, served in the military, your drill sergeant called out what you were doing, your counts in what? Cadence, right? The drill sergeant called out the counts in cadence. There's a steady cadence to the drums as the drummer is playing. It's also the rhythmic sequence or flow of sounds in language. If you like poetry and listen to poetry, there is a cadence in poetry that you hear. So life is busy. So how do we, as God's people, as his children, as his ambassadors in a busy world where we're pulled in many directions, in many, many important different directions, how do we live in a healthy place? How do we do that? How many of you this morning, again, with 100% participation, if you're at home, participate as well. How many of you think that you could live life from a healthier place than you're living right now? My hand's up. How many of you think you could live life from a healthier place? Yeah, it's hard to count, but a majority, if not all the hands, except again, a couple of you that are maybe sleeping, or maybe you've got it figured out, and you've got this figured out, and that is great if you do, but most of us could live life from a healthier place than where we're at. And I want to do that as well because I want to be about my father's business. I want to be able to take advantage of all the different ministry opportunities that he puts in front of me that he wants me to be able to take place of. I want to be able to preach the good news of Jesus Christ from a healthy place with all aspects of my life working in rhythm and sequence together for his good and for his glory. And so the title of today's sermon is, we're looking at things from God's viewpoint. Because God is the author of everything, amen? God is the giver of life. And again, we've got a couple of great, uh, great ministry things coming up with the pregnancy center, their walk, and, and, and the nest there. And uh, the 12th is the last day for their fundraiser, uh, their annual fundraiser. So if you want to support them, this is the, the week to do that. That ends on the 12th. And we've got those cards at the back for the pregnancy center and for the nest. Take those at the end of, uh, of the service. But God is the author of everything. God is the one that created everything. God breathed and spoke everything into existence. And everything that God has created from when he designed the world, it has a cadence to it. You know, we know that the earth spins on, his, on its axis. axis. What happens if we bump the axis of the earth? We're in trouble, right? We're, we're in big trouble. There is a rhythm to that. There is a cadence to the, to the speed uh, as everything revolves and moves that's in orbit. And God has made human beings the same way. We are not called to live life at full speed all the time, nonstop, without having times of rest. And personally, I've discovered this, and maybe this is why God has been dealing with me on this as I move through my late 40s and, and, and 50 gets closer. Now I know after church, somebody in their 70s will come up to me and say, you're just a young pup. Wait till you're my age. Okay, but at the same point, it's all about perspective because those that are in their teens and 20s will come up to me and they'll be like, yeah, you're old. I understand why you're going through this. It's all about where we're at in life. But the older you get, the harder it is for your body under prolonged periods of stress, prolonged periods where you're not taking time to rest. It is harder on uh, our bodies than they are when we are younger. These things catch up, I know, with me now sooner than what they did when I was younger. So it's important to be healthy and to eat right and to, and to exercise and to work hard and also to rest. See, God has designed and created life to have a rhythm to it, to have a healthy balance to it. Again, when you hear music and a musician is offbeat, you can distinctly tell uh, when drums are offbeat. Or you can tell when someone claps off tune. 
right? We're singing a song, and you know, you hear somebody clapping off tune, and maybe this morning you're like, I've never heard anybody clap off tune. You're probably the one clapping off tune then. I'm sorry. Because we all can hear it. No, I don't know if there's anyone here this morning clapping off tune, but, uh, you know, you can tell when someone is clapping off tune, and, and sometimes it's humorous when you see people trying to clap on tune, and the harder they try, you just can't. But some people just don't have any rhythm in their bodies. That's the way God has designed and created them. You know, same thing is why certain people make good radio personalities. They have a distinct cadence to their voice. Or you have people that will, that they don't just put anybody on audiobooks. Anybody like to listen to audiobooks when you're driving? They you know, those people have the right cadence to their voice. Or the late night radio hosts that are on at midnight at 1 a.m. Welcome tonight sounds. That's why I can't listen to them as I'm driving because I just want to go to sleep. You know, I got to turn on some of the, some crazy loud music to keep myself awake when I'm driving at, at night. Maybe music I don't even listen to just to keep myself awake. Or maybe my voice has a nice cadence on a Sunday morning and that's why you decide to take a nap. No, I'm just kidding. But we hear and we see cadence in our life in all kinds of different areas. A cadence allows songs to be more enjoyable. So let's take a look at what God says about what he's modeled for us so that we can live our life with the kind of balance, this healthy balance that God has designed and created us to live our life for. So let's go back to the very beginning. We're not going to have time to go through all this uh, this morning. We'll look at more of this again in the next three weeks. But to start with, in Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 3. It says, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night, and evening passed, and morning came, marking the first day. That's, that's what God did on the first day of creation. Sometimes we try to get a lot of things done in our day. We burn the midnight oil. We try to get as many things in as we can. Again, I'm preaching to myself this morning, if no one else. But God separated and created day and light and separated it and said, this is good, and it marked the first day. What we see here is God creating order and structure right away with creation. We serve a God of order, amen? We see here that he separates the light from the dark and he defines what light and dark is or we wouldn't even know what it is. That is why light is called daylight and dark is called nighttime because God is the one that ordered it. God is the one that created it. God is the one that named it. He put a rhythm in place of working and being awake and nighttime and rest time since the very beginning of creation. This is why we have sunrises and we have sunsets, why we have evening and we have morning. You know, we have some beautiful sunrises and sunsets in Ohio, especially in this area. It's the one thing I will say with as flat as it is. That's been a hard thing for me to get used to moving here is how flat it is here. But I think how flat it is kind of gives way to some of the beautiful sunrises and sunsets that we have. When we were on vacation uh, a few weeks ago, we went and we spent an evening at the beach and we watched the sunset as we were on the beach. It was beautiful, all the different colors. And, and uh, it was just, it was a, a beautiful time. But God has created that. So what we can learn from God from the creation story um, is that there is a rhythm to life. And it's a rhythm that God has created. So let's continue to look at things here from God's viewpoint. Let's look at God's design. Look at verse 14 with me says, then God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, the days, and the years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And that is what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was, say it with me, good. God saw that it was good. God is good, amen? And God is the creator. He is the author of everything, and so God can do whatever he wants to do, right? 
Sometimes we want to tell God what he should do, but that's a different sermon for another time. We sometimes, we think that we know better, but God can do anything that he wants to do because he is God. He is the one that has created everything. And so he always has been, he always will be, he is God. And so God, if he wanted to, he could have created everything in one day. Am I correct? God is God. He can do anything that he wants to. He could have created anything in one day. He created, he could have created everything in one breath if he really wanted to, because he can probably talk a long time in one breath because he's God. He created every living thing. But in his creative genius, what did he do? He broke up creation into a seven-day period. And because of that, this is where we get our week from. And all of our lives revolve around a week. Anybody get more than seven days in their week? Anybody want more than seven days? Yeah, exactly, yeah. A lot of us do. Why? Because we're not living in that rhythm, in that cadence, in that healthy balance that God has designed and created us to live in. God modeled to us what a week should look like. God is the one that created the 24-hour cycle in a day. Guys, just in looking at a man-made clock, you should see the hand of God in creation on your life. And going to bed and getting up because God has created day and night. God has created morning and evening. God has created the 24-hour cycle that we live in. Mankind didn't just create, hey, there's 24 hours a day. That's how we're all going to live. God had already created that. You following me? God has created the, the, the life cycles in which we live with. Every hour that we live should remind us of God's goodness, of his majesty, of how big he is because he's created. God created here, we read about the sun, the moon, and the stars, all of us to help us mark our days, our weeks, our months, our years. They help us mark our seasons as well. We have four seasons here in Ohio. Right? We got winter, spring, road construction, and fall. We got our four seasons. But there's a rhythm that God has built into creation. There's a rhythm that God has built into every season in life. And God is a God of order. And because God is a God of order, he created all of this before he created any living beings. God created all these other things for the structure of a 24-hour cycle and and, and hours and, and our week in order before he created anything else. There was day and night before God created the animals, the birds, the fish. And before he created those things, he separated the water from the land and then he created the plants and the trees and the vegetations and the seeds so that the animals and the birds had something to eat. Think about the order and the complexity of even creation. This last week, I was just kind of thinking about that aspect. Not just that God created everything, but just the order in which God created everything. What happens? What would have happened if God decided to create all the animals before there were plants for them to eat? They'd all died off. There's order in everything that God has done. So think about the order and the complexity of what God did. There is a distinct rhythm and, and cadence to and in creation. All right, we are not going to get nearly as far with this as I want to this morning. All right, we're going to do one more, one more scripture and then we're going to have communion. And then next week we're going to bring all this together. We're going to talk about this as far as in ourselves, in, in our person or personhood or whatever we want to talk about. Having order, having this healthy cadence and rhythm in our lives, because a lot of you raised your hands with me this morning and said you could live life from a healthier place. Amen? A lot of us need to live life from a healthier place, because guess what? As technology seems to increase, what happens to the speed of our life? Just seems to get busier. You know, when you've got little kids, you think you're super busy, but it seems like the older you get, It still gets busier. Every retired person I talk to, and I just talked to one, a friend of mine, this the the other night at the fair, and uh, and he said, "Hey, we really got to get together. Maybe at the end of the month or next month, because I'm so busy." And I said, "Every retired person I talk to says they're busier now than when they were working." I have no idea how that's possible, but retired people tell me it's true, so it must be true. 
But every stage in life we go through, life is busy. So how do we live from a healthy place all the time? Church, this is so huge for us. This is so huge for me to be the best husband and father and pastor that I can be. To be the best support to my wife, to be the best support I can to uh, the sheriff's deputies I get to serve as their chaplain, to be the best support I can when I, when I serve the, the, the nest and, and just the different ministries that we serve. In order for me to be healthy, I need to live in God's, in, in God's goodness and in that cadence that he has for life where we work hard. God worked hard in creation, but then he stepped back and he rested. And that's a missing ingredient that I see in my life a lot of times. It's a missing ingredient that I see in a lot of your lives as well because I know you and I talk with you and, and, and even if I don't, I see what's going on on Facebook. I'm going here, I'm going there, it's crazy. What are we gonna do? How is, I don't know how to fit all this stuff in. So how do we fit it in and how do we rest so that we are able to do all that God wants to do in our life? All right, our last verse. We're going to close with this. Verse 26, Genesis chapter 1. It says, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We see that human beings were created in the perfect order as creation was established. With this cadence from God, God created the boundaries, he created the structure. Human beings were created first. He created all these other things. And when we see things from God's viewpoint, when we see God's from his perspective, we see this. We see beauty in the boundaries that God has created we see beauty in light and dark. We see beauty in morning and evening. We see beauty in sunrise and sunset. And we'll see beauty in working hard. And we'll find beauty in rest. The reality is some of us live life with the badge of honor of, look, I've not had time to rest because I'm working so hard. Right? Am I the only one? I don't think so. I see a lot of nods. And that's hard to admit sometimes, right? But we need to find that cadence, that healthy rhythm for our life so that we stay healthy, so that we can be there for our family and our children, so that we can do the ministry and do the different things that God has called us to do. There is a beautiful cadence in each day, but sometimes we as human beings think that we know what's best for our lives, and we know how we want to live it. But when we, bound, when we bend those boundaries that God has given us, that's when life gets crazy. That's when life gets hectic. That's when we feel like we don't have any margins. That's when we, we don't wake up feeling well-rested in the morning or we don't give ourselves enough hours of sleep to rest. Because God has given you, God has given each and every one of us a call to proclaim the good news. Amen? to everyone that we come in contact with, that's why we're here. Because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. You're here today because someone told you about what Jesus did. Maybe you heard it in a sermon. Maybe it was a neighbor. Maybe it was a family member. But someone told you about what Jesus did in their life. And that's why you're here today. Thank God they didn't keep Jesus to themselves. And that's what we're called to do, amen? To tell other people about Jesus. And so, we're going to segue with that into communion this morning. If you have your communion cups, pull them out. If you did not get one this morning, slip your hand up and we will have an usher come and, uh, and get you one this morning. But I don't know about you, but I want to be able to live the life that God has for me. Amen? I want to be able to be um, ready to do all the things that God has called me to do. And part of that is living life in his plan and in his will and, and living life from a healthy standpoint in that healthy cadence and that healthy rhythm that he has for us. You know, it's all because of what Jesus, again, accomplished on the cross as to why we're here. We're not here to have a bigger house, have a nicer car. If God blesses you with those things, 
I'm excited for you. Right? Amen? Those are all good things that we get to enjoy, some of the different pleasures that God gives us in life, but our first and foremost purpose is about being about our Father's work. It's about telling people about the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's pray about that this morning. It's about, it's about not just taking other people to heaven with us. We want that, ultimately. But when people come to know Jesus, they find an amazing sense of purpose in this earth as well. Because if we don't have Jesus, life is just about us. But because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross, we can have purpose today and we have the promise and the hope of a future in heaven. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, it says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread or drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. And so let's do that right now. Let's take a moment. Let's pause. Let's take a moment of reflection. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you anything that you need to make right with God. This is a time to repent of our sins. If you are in need of healing in your body, ask God for the healing that you need. And then we will pray over our communion elements and we will all take communion together. So let's do that right now. Let's pause. God, we're just so thankful for your goodness. We're so thankful for what Jesus accomplished on the cross. So thankful, Lord, for your sacrifice. God, we ask now that you'd cleanse us. God, that you would remove our sin from us. You remove it as far as the east is from the west. God, as human beings, we sin, we mess up, we make mistakes. But God, help us to live life from a point of your goodness and your grace where we come to you when we mess up, not we live our life from a point of knowing that you'll forgive us so we choose to mess up. But God, that we're grieved and we truly repent when we mess up. We thank you for forgiveness. God, we ask that you administer to healing to those that are in need of healing. Some that are watching from hospital rooms this morning. Some that are watching from home with, with, with challenging health diagnoses. Those that are healing from surgeries. Those that might be sitting in a campground this morning. Getting that moment to try to relax and debrief and find that time of rest to be moving to that perfect cadence and rhythm in life as they move into the fall and all that you've called them to do. But God, we ask that you'd forgive us of our sins. We ask that you'd heal our bodies. God, we ask now that you would bless the bread, that you would bless the juice as we take communion together now. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your wafer. This is the body of Jesus broken for you. This is the blood of Jesus shed for you. Why don't you stand and we'll close in prayer this morning.
Heavenly Father, we come before you. And God, the time of communion is a, a solemn moment, and it's also a time for celebration. It cost Jesus his life, but because his life was given as a sacrifice on our behalf, God, we have the promise and the hope of a future in heaven with you and the promise and the hope of, of living a life of purpose here on this earth to tell other people about you. God, I pray that we as a church, as we've had just an amazing summer of ministry, as we look into the fall, God, that you would just give us that time of refreshing. God, that we might not go into the fall tired or run down. God, that we would all take that opportunity to, to refresh and be ready to be used by you for your purpose and for your glory. Because God, we are here to lead people to you. We are here to make disciples. And God, we are here to live our life for you. God, use us for your purpose and glory now as we go out through these doors. We go out to tell the world about the good news of Jesus and all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you. Don't forget to pick up your handouts for the nest and for the pregnancy center on your way out. Stop by the LifeWise table uh, in the foyer. You can register your students today if you are in the Elmwood district. And uh, again, just want to encourage you, share that on social media this week. God bless you. Have a great week.